Good evening. Welcome to Expression and Painting with Paul Creamy. Tonight I brought uh, three paintings. I brought this painting that we did a while back. Uh, it's a painting of uh, Florida in its Siesta Keys. We did it about uh, four or five months ago. And I'm very, I finally finished it. I'm very pleased with the way it came out. It's got a nice, soft, quiet path leading to the water. Some nice birds. I also brought another painting that we did a couple of months ago, a forest, and that's finished. And I'm quite pleased with the way this came out. It has a nice quietness, you know, it's very soft and it's very intriguing. You want to walk through the path. I like the uh, entrance of it, the way you feel like you can, you feel like you're present in this particular painting. And I love that in the painting. And the last one I brought was the last painting I did on TV. And it's this fall scene of the North River on, on the, in Hanson and Hanover, right down by my ex there in Broadway. In the painting, I had the photograph, and uh, I really worked on it. it. I took, we did it in an hour last time, but you know, it was only a sketch. And put a ton of time into this, probably three weeks off and on working on it. And I think it came out quite nice. It's got a real beautiful quietness. I love the way the water goes. You can feel the movement. Nicely done. Tonight I brought a still life. We're going to do a still life of flowers. I brought this flower arrangement, orange flowers in a pot on a table. And we're going to try to do this if we can. So I got the canvas and we're going to set it up. See if we can put this in a way that it won't fall off, but it does, it does. So I have a palette here set up and I got uh, the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And we're going to go to work. So I want to do something for the background. The particular background's a window. So we're going to do some white hint of green. So like I said, when you start a painting, you just block it in. There we go. Put this here. I want this to look like glass, so I'm not going to put a lot of paint on it. I'm going to try to keep it transparent looking. So we're coming on to Thanksgiving, where this is the 21st, a couple of days, Tuesday. So we got Wednesday and Thursday, and with Thanksgiving coming, I want to wish everybody a great Thanksgiving. And I uh, want to see the Patriots beat the Jets. I don't believe in hate, but I don't like the Jets. So, but that's not the same as hate. Not liking somebody is not the same as hating them. So that's what we're doing. You're just putting down a background. I'm using gesso, white paint, and a touch of green. And I'm just putting some soft strokes on. We had our open house last weekend. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, that's so laboriously difficult to do one of those open houses two days. I hang up 80 pictures in the hallway in the morning, and then I take them down at night, and put them in the studio, and then hang them up and put them down and hang them up for three days. By the end of the third day, I'm ready for a nap for the next day. I know I don't realize how old I'm getting until I start doing stuff like that. Well, I know you're dying to find out how old I am. Well, I'll be 69 the 22nd of December. And I started painting when I was seven. So you can figure out the math. It's been a while. Well, you know what I forgot to bring tonight? I forgot to bring the blower. Oh, my goodness. 
Well, we're going to have to struggle through this. And I can hear you out there, why didn't you just paint the canvas white and start with a white canvas? Well, you know something, there's something about the black canvas and the way it changes the quality of the paint that I love. I used to paint, when I went to the museum school, the uh, technical painting, they taught us to paint the canvases red. And I did that for 20 years. And then one day I, I painted a painting and I didn't like it, so I got out the black gesso and painted the canvas and I said well let's try painting it this color and it, I loved it so ever since then all right so we got some kind of a soft quiet movement Whenever you have a window in the background, you know, the best way to do it is to just squiggle the paint around like this. So it doesn't have any one direction. By no means is it done, but it, it, it gets to the point. It gets where I want it to be somewhat. All right, so we got this beautiful blue vase. I'm going to put this photograph somewhere where it'll be out of the way and it won't get wrecked. Nice. We got this beautiful blue vase that since I've taken this photograph, it's probably gotten destroyed. I, I don't know what happened. I think it got destroyed in one of the moves moved a couple of times. I'm going to start with the real dark blue. There should be a table somewhere in here too. I'll do that in a second. I'm going to put the vase right about here. See how I don't worry about anything? Splashes around. Who cares? It's just a, a blocking in situation. 90% of the work that I do on these paintings are done in the studio afterwards. All of the stuff that I do. I decided to mix a little paint for the, uh, the front of the table. This table make it go like this. I had this table in my big room for years and years and years. We had a fire so we had to get rid of all of the beautiful furniture and stuff in that side of the house. Well, our house went from something that was very very colonial to a looking like a condo. And my wife hated it when I had it looking Colonial. I, every time she looked at it, she says, I want it lighter. I want it to look like a condo. And now it looks like a condo. And she says to me just recently, you know, I miss it when it looked like a, a colonial. You know, I said, oh, my God. But when you've been married to somebody for 47 years, everything is yes, dear. So what I'm doing is I'm giving myself... the foundation of this particular, I'm sketching this thing out, that's what I'm doing. It's the foundation of sketching out the whole working of this particular painting. I'm going to step back now. See, I got this beautiful vase, I'm going to have these flowers. I don't think I'm going to put the chairs in, but I might. Let's step back for a second and take a look. I have my, yeah, that's kind of nice. It's, I put it off to the side a tiny bit. I didn't want it directly in the middle of the table. But it might be, I don't know. Let's make this a little darker. At least one side. The sun's coming through this side, 
So we'll make this side a little darker. Oh, I'm so glad we're done with all of this election. I couldn't stand the ads. Man, please. By the way, I went to see Lincoln last night. Great movie. I, probably, I think it's probably one of the best movies. That's going to be one of the movies of all time. That Spielberg, I'm telling you, when he decides to do something, man, he's incredible. And that Lewis guy, the English, the Irish guy, he, I was told that it took, Spielberg asked him to do the movie and he said he'd need a year to prepare. And Spielberg waited for him. And I'll tell you something, you sat in the audience and you felt like you were looking at Abraham Lincoln. It was absolutely fabulous. All right. We got all this green stuff now, see? See how I worry about how it looks? Just put it on the canvas. It'll come out. I promise you it'll work. Making mocks. I want everything to look very natural, very easy. I discovered early on when you paint, if you fret about every little line, it never works. Just put it on. You're going to go over it if it doesn't work, it'll work. I never think nothing's going to work. I always have this mentality, everything I touch on a canvas belongs to me and it's going to work. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Let me step back. See, if I had my blower, I would have dried this by now, and then we'd still be moving. Ah, oh, yeah, that's going to look good. These orange flowers are going to look really nice. You know, and the funny thing is I brought everything but orange. I mean, I got 9 million tubes of paint in the studio. They had a sale at AC Moore, $2 a tube. I bought 150 tubes. My wife saw him the other day and she says, my God, the whole drawer is full of paint. How many tubes of paint did you buy? I says, Mary Ellen, the tubes of paint are $5 a, a tube and they had them on sale for $2. Now, what, what do you think? She said, I would have bought 150 tubes. I said, well, I think that's what I bought. She said, that's why I'm still married after 47 years. She understood, she, my wife is very frugal. Unbelievable, great woman. All right, so we got these gorgeous orange flowers. So we're going to just, we're just going to put down the feeling of the flowers and then all the detail we'll do later. And never be afraid because it, it, once you have any kind of thought of, oh my goodness, I can't do this or I can't do that, you've defeated yourself. You don't want to do that. Just keep thinking, everything I do in this particular painting is going to be done because I'm doing it and I'm doing it the way I want to do it and it's perfect. And if I make it look easy, it's because I've been doing it for 50, 60 years. When I first started, I would be standing there saying, well, what do I do here? What do I do? I don't worry about that now. I just do it. I step back and I take a look and I say, and I always think because it goes off the canvas, it doesn't work, it works. If you don't take it off the canvas, it doesn't work. A friend of mine, a very great artist, when I first got started as a young adult, 
Connie uh, Pratt, she lives in Norwell, great portrait artist, used to say to me, Paul, never be afraid to go off the edge of the canvas. It brings the, people, it brings the eye around in a nice way. I said, okay. I learned that from her, and I've been doing it ever since. Let's see what we're doing here. Let me step back for a second. I have my reducing mirror tonight. I brought it. I got my chair here. I'm going to go sit down for a second, take a look. I have a great crew, Dr. Brown and her beautiful daughter, and Colleen Smith, the great director of this fabulous show. She's doing a fabulous job for me, putting it on YouTube, on the stations. See, this doesn't have any real power yet, but this is just the beginning. So what you do is you look at it, you see where you want these things to work, uh, go, and you just keep putting them there until they, they have a certain balance. Nice. Once you get the flowers in, get them all set, then you can start thinking about doing some of the detail. I mean, there's no detail in any of this. I mean, I'll work on these flowers like after a while, they'll have so much paint, you can almost feel like you'll be able to smell them. See, painting is not difficult. The difficult part about painting is the beginning and the end. In the middle, you'll have the greatest time. Some people struggle so much, they think too much. Just do it. Like they sneak a rad, just do it. So this, this base is in the sunlight coming from this side. So we'll put a few of these lines in from the vase, try to make it look like they're even. some highlights in. Take your time, there's no hurry. all kinds of green stuff hanging over the edge. Let me see if I can get a smaller brush. Yeah, I do. This side. I'm 
a little lighter, a little darker over here. I love to paint. I just think painting is, oh God, if you're going to do something in your life for pleasure and you've never done it, don't think that you want to sell anything. Don't do it because you want to sell anything. Just do it because you want the pleasure of being able to see yourself create something beautiful and then be able to hang it up and say, I painted this. To me, that's a great, great feeling to have people look at it and say that they love it. I see my famous friend Ted just showed up. I'm glad to see him. He's a great friend. He comes in and encourages me. So painting is something that we do for the pleasure, but you know something? If you start taking it yourself too serious, you sometimes can get a little nuts. Stay away from getting a little nuts. You're better off staying a little happy. You're better off painting for the pure pleasure of doing it, for the excitement of saying, I, I just did something wonderful. And to me, there's nothing greater than that feeling of looking at the painting after it's done, sitting in my rocking chair at the back of the studio and, and saying, wow, look at this. Look how cool this is. And you get that feeling, that happens, that's the best part of painting, to me. Let me go sit down here for a second. I want to go take a look. I'm painting this rather fast because I haven't painted. I've taken this whole year off to uh, market my work on the internet. I've been doing Facebook and uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, and I've come to the end of it, Jan December 31st. I'm going to back away only instead of 12 hours a day, it's going to be two hours a day. And the other 10 hours a day, I'm going to paint. And I've got 25 to 40 paint, uh, canvases painted black. And I'm so excited because I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I mean, I think I might just do a whole huge series of still lifes for about six months. That's what I've been thinking about. So I'm going through my photographs. And I'm picking out all the still lifes, and I'm deciding which one that I want to paint and which ones I, I don't want to paint. And I'm putting them in a box, and I'm going to uh, go after them. Like tonight, I decided to do this. I mean, this, this has nothing going on yet, but I'm telling you, when I bring it back, it's going to look like a whole nother universe, because it's going to have all of this movement and all of this stuff. Like the photograph. The photograph, very, very blah, very soft. Well, when you start changing things and you start doing things, I just threw this paint on rather quickly. Show you what I'm talking about. I'm getting another brush here. And simple thing like. I'll put some white on the tabletop here, so. And it'll change the feeling of the painting almost instantly. See, painting is looking. I'm not teaching you how to paint stroke by stroke like some teachers do. I'm not that kind of a person. I, I believe demonstrating. So when I say I'm going to do something, see, it just changed the whole complexion of that painting. And you put some of this white back in here. What I'm trying to teach you is how to see how to paint. Because you know something? There's so many people that think they know how to paint, but they don't know how to see. Sometimes that what they paint, 
they think it looks great, but it, it lacks a lot of personality. And I'm not picking on them, I'm just saying that a painting with personality was thought out. The artist figured out what he wanted to show you and what he wanted to do for you. Like I said to you earlier about my paintings, if I feel like you're involved in the painting, if you're present in the painting, if you have some kind of emotion, then the painting worked. And people say, well, why do you waste your time painting flowers? I love painting flowers. They have such great personality. God's great gift to make us feel good. So I put a little tiny white on the surface of this, and it changed the painting already. Already. And I'm going to put a little white in the background, too, for the windows. And that's going to change it. I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to touch the orange or touch too much of the flowers. put out some more white paint. So when you're painting a painting, there's a lot that goes on inside your mind and inside the painting. Sometimes you're better off just going to sit down in your chair and look at it for a while as you go along. Take your time. I tell people I spend more time in my rocking chair than I do at the easel. My rocking chair is famous. People have been hearing about it forever. They come to the studio for the open house, the first thing they do is they say, where's the rocket chair? And then they see it and they go sit in it and it's like, oh, I see what you're talking about. But you're getting an idea of what I'm doing here, I hope. You're starting to see it. I've got to be careful because I don't want to get all of this mixed up into a thing. If I had my blower, I would have been a lot better off. I left it. I, don't, I thought I had everything. But it's been a while since we did the show. And, you know, you get to this point in your life. Oh, boy. I'm still tired from the open house, moving stuff around. Yeah, night. So I took an ad out in this magazine, this art magazine that's been out for 40 years called uh, Southwest, Southwest Art Magazine. They saw one of my coastal paintings of Maine and they contacted me through the internet, my web uh, email, and they asked me if I'd be interested in advertising in the magazine. And I emailed them back and said, yeah, if it, the price is right. And it was $1,000 for the ad, but they, they gave it a, a discount of $500. So I said, well, I think it might be worth it then. And I took the ad. And uh, it really looks great. It, it's come out today. It's um, their December issue. And they did a thing on the coastal landscapes. Let me step back again and take a look. And see, it's starting to change now. Like the painting is starting to have a personality. This white doesn't work on the vase, so just get rid of it. See, when you're painting a painting, you're in charge. If something doesn't look good or feel good, get rid of it. Paint over it. This is your painting, you're in charge of it. It's your, your work. You're the master of your own situation here. When you're totally in charge, you can do what you want to do.
this particular vase has ribs, like I said, so 30 minutes already? I can't believe it. What's, when you're having this much fun, painting disappears. You don't even realize the time. I mean, I've stood at the easel in my life for five, six, seven, eight hours and not even felt like 10 minutes. I'd step back and say, God, what happened to the time? Well, my wife would call me and say, you ever coming home? You've been there forever. She's gotten a lot better. I've probably gotten a lot better too. Happens after you've been married for 47 years. Uh, so I was talking about the Lincoln movie. Well, so this Daniel Lewis is probably, I think, one of the best actors around, or, uh, ever, maybe. Magnificent role he did in this movie. You really felt like you were looking at Abraham Lincoln. And God... When it was over, I kept on saying, I want more. I didn't want to get up and leave. Even though the ending was real sad. Everybody knows the ending. But, oh, what a movie. So what I'm doing is, I'm trying to give you the impression that the light's moving across this vase. To this side's darker. And you know what? I tell you, I'll probably spend a whole day just on the vase alone. Just to get, just because that's the most important thing. One thing that you do in art, and, and, when, and you're doing something like this, every object that you touch, you do it to the best of your ability, to, to the point where you feel like, I'm happy with it, and then step away. Don't overwork it, and don't underwork it. See if you can get that happy medium where it feels good, and you like it. And don't listen to other people. They didn't paint it. If they make a remark to you about what, what is this and what is that, hey, go paint yours. See how you do. I want to go sit down again. Oh, yeah. Much better starting to have a rhythm. My reducing mirror's got so many cracks and breaks, I've dropped it so much. I'll sit in the chair so long, I'll fall asleep and drop the mirror. Reducing mirror. Nah, those flowers are really looking good. They're really starting to float. They're coming at you. And that surface, because I painted it white, it changed the feeling of the whole thing. It gives me a nice depth. The background's soft, the foreground's Stronger. I have to do the edge of the table more orange. I just everything, like I said, all I did was hurriedly touch it. I didn't really take it serious. Let's see if I can take it a little more serious. This oak table. I'm just giving the hint of a table, that's all. It has these placemats. I'm not going to put the placemats on. That's good. That's what I wanted. I'm going to sit down again because I want to look at this. Because it's got so many intriguing things going on. I mean, most people would be happy with it like this. They'd say, oh my God, it's finished. You know, and, but it's not. These flowers, they, they have a, a, a dark spot somewhere in the center. And they're, they're what they are is poppies. And they're absolutely gorgeous. I've painted this particular subject about, I don't know, 10, 15 times. And every time I paint it, I'm intrigued by the flow. I love the idea of the... See, opposite of blue is orange. And so there's a struggle going on for the energy of your eyes and the energy in the painting. And that energy is what intrigues a person when they stand in front of a painting. They're trying to figure out why they're so into this particular painting. And it's because the artist is playing with them. Because the blue is cold and the orange is warm or hot. And that's another tug. So there's this 
going back and forth stuff with your eye and your senses. And painting is, that's what painting is. Painting is a challenge. It challenges you to participate with the work. And an artist that really knows what he's doing does that very subtly and he involves you. I mean, I love it when people walk up to my painting or I had a young man look at my painting of um, Acadia, Maine. And he said, when I was standing near it, I didn't appreciate it. When I stepped back 10 feet and looked back at it, it took my breath away. And I said, because that's the right perspective for that particular painting. You know, when you're standing on top of the painting, even when you're painting it, all you see is this blur. But as I sit in that chair and I look at it, all the little nuances and all of the feeling and all of the mood, it's there. And I'm not even into the detail. This is just a sketch. This is just the beginning of it. And when you get into the detail, when you start putting the real, I call it the frosting on the cake. When you put the frosting on the cake, that's what Sam Evans used to say to me all the time. He says, when you get to the end, you put the frosting on the cake. And then he says, then you have them. That's the best part of the painting, the very, very end. And I know some people that don't know how to end a painting. I have a friend that I, I think the world of, and he paints, and he's an elderly man, and he's only been painting for a few years, like, I don't know, 95, so I don't know, a few years. And we talk about this, and I say to him, you don't know when to stop. You keep going, and you keep changing it, you keep changing it, and every time you change it, you make it into another painting. I said, what you need is what I was told when I met this person that was a Montar for me, and he said to me, I gotta come by and hit you on the side of the head with a two by four to tell you when it's done, or just to get away from it. Put it away, put it against the wall, stick it in the closet. That happens to artists. I've seen great paintings disappear on people because they worked them to death. It's a discipline. And it's a learning experience. The more you paint, the better you get at it. I see this little 12-year-old girl at the building doing this incredible stuff. And it reminds me of when I was a 12-year-old kid at the museum school on Saturday. All these big, I thought they were huge adults, and they were only high school kids. You know, but I was so impressed with their work. But you know something? When you go to an art school, like the museum school in Boston, they have the best of the best. And you're the best of the best because what you do is better than what they do. So what I tell people is that if they're going to go to art school, not to look at anybody. Keep yourself focused on you. And you'll be happier. Because there's always somebody in your class, at that particular class, that's great at what they do. And when you were in high school or junior high, you were the best because nobody could do what you did. But when you get around the best of the best at the museum school, I mean, they take 125 students out of 125,000 applicants. And when they took me, I was number 10 as a kid. So, I mean, I had gone to the dean when I was in the ninth grade and when I was in the 10th grade and the 11th grade. And every year I'd bring three, 400 drawings or paintings all in one portfolio or two portfolios and he picked 10 pieces. This went on for four years. And so when I finally entered my portfolio, he said he had to leave the room because I wasn't there. But he had helped me. He, he had taken me under his wing. Oh yeah, this is really starting to, this is really starting to make me feel good. I can't wait to get into this painting. Now, all that I've done tonight so far is sketch it out. The real body of the work comes all week, or the next two weeks, or the next three weeks. But if you have a good foundation, that makes a big difference. It makes, makes like that scene with the um, fall scene. I really got a nice feeling on, on the first hour on TV. 
And all I did was correct and correct and keep adjusting until it got to where I wanted it to be. I'm trying to look at the photograph to see, maybe it has a brown spot in the center of this particular. I'll get out some brown. The brown won't hurt because it'll help. Uh, see, I, I didn't really want to get crazy with this because it, it's pushing the envelope a little, but let me mix the brown with the orange here and do a little something with the edge here. That's what I love about painting. It's just so challenging. Your mind is completely immersed in what you're doing when you're doing it. And you're playing with the whole surface of the painting. And you're inviting the participator, the person that sees the painting afterwards, to see what you've done, how you brought the, all of this together. So if you've never painted, you can paint. Anybody can paint. It may not be a great painting when you start, but I'm telling you, if you keep painting, it'll get better and better. And all of a sudden, you'll start saying to yourself, boy, I think I'm a painter. You know. See, I'm a little leery about going near the flowers because the paint's so wet. Maybe I can get a smaller brush and go, go in there for a minute. Yeah, this is going to look really good. I, I really feel good about this whole thing. So if my studio is at the E.T. Wright building in Rockland, and it's uh, on the corner of Liberty and Webster Street. It's right across the street from Mary Lou's. If you went straight on past Mary Lou's, you'd go right into the center of Rockland. We have a great association there, a whole bunch of artists. And they have a gallery, fourth floor art gallery. It's open to the public. And they have some beautiful work in there. So if you're looking for something for somebody for Christmas, they're having a show with small paintings up right now. And they're fairly reasonable. I think they're uh, under a certain amount, under $100, $100 or uh, somewhere in there. I'm not quite sure. They, they put a limit on how expensive they could be. So they're, they're small works. I have three paintings, and they're all $100. Or one's $150. It's a little bigger. It's got a frame. One's a birch tree. So what I got to do is go in and do all of this work in between the flowers and just take my time. But it's so wet, I'm going to make sure that I'm not touching it.
I, and left this kind of spotty back here because that's the shadow of the vase and the flowers. So I saw two of the best movies in a long time. I saw um, 007 in Lincoln. Boy, good night. 007, man, that's got a ton of action. I think this is the best movie he's made, the, the one that's playing James Bond out of the three movies that he's made. You get an idea of what's going on. So when I work on the vase and I put all of the, the lines and the, I just got to be a little drier to, to manipulate all the color. See if I can do a little something with it, hopefully, maybe. I have a woman in Florida, every time I paint this particular painting, she buys it. I'll send her a photograph. I think she has two or three versions of it. She never gets tired of it. In fact, she just sold her big, huge house and um, moved on to a golf course condominium. And she's all excited. Been in this house for a long, long time. And it was time. Take a look. Oh yeah, that, that's really starting to take shape. I'm loving it. So you can almost see the you can see the photograph on the table and you can see the flowers in the vase in the vase and feel the tabletop. Got the edge of the table. From now on, now, the rest of the painting, that's when you have to really take your time until you get to the end. I mean, people say I paint extremely fast. Well, I must, because that's what they say. But uh, I'll tell you, I'll paint the same thing over and over and over again until I get what I want. My friend Ted's come in and seen me work on that fall scene day after day and how it changed every time he came in. Different feeling. Good. We're getting there. I love Thanksgiving. I love the holidays. Because I'm a holiday kid anyways. I was born three days before Christmas. And so I have this mentality that holidays are great. Some people can't stand them. But Thanksgiving and Easter are my two favorite. And I, guess, I think it's because of the, the eating factor. My mother and father would get up and they'd make raviolis. Oh, my God. It would be like, shh. This old Italian, my mother's Irish, and they'd start. Oh. The only day of the year they didn't get along and they were married 55 years, St. Patty's Day. He'd get up and say St. Patty was an Italian. Oh, that's all it took. It was like, that was the end of the day. I used to say, Dad, don't say it this year. Please, don't get it going. You know, I learned a lot from my father because all of the mistakes he makes, I make the same mistakes. So, you know, he used to say to me, you want to stay married forever? Just say, yes, honey, and then go do what you want. Yeah. So, they get... They finally figure it out after a while.
I had some great uh, God, news. Things are really coming around. So the internet and I have become friends. I never even know how to turn a computer on. I mean, this is going to be really nice. You're going to be very pleased with this painting when I bring it back. I'm very pleased with the way it feels. It feels floaty. It feels powerful. I, I love the weight of the vase in the. The, see, that there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the painting that in, you look at it and people don't understand what the artist is trying to do. I, I have this photograph right here. I'll hold it up again. And it does, the painting looks nothing like the photograph. The photograph is a stepping stone in my mind where I want to go. So I take the photograph, I put it on the table. But what I want to do, and I did this, I made you... Focus on this huge blue vase. And then I actually just flung the flowers all over the place, hanging out like the vase in the, in, in the picture. But in the picture, the vase is tiny and the flowers are big. In, the, in this particular painting, the vase is big and the flowers are all over the place, but they don't control the whole painting. But what it does is it moves your eye around the canvas and it makes you feel like they're right in the room and you're right with them. And you want to go up and you want to touch them or smell them. And I have kids touching my paintings constantly when they come to the studio because there's so much paint on them and they're looking at them and they think they're actually, I don't know. When I used to paint things like this, my little kids, when they were little, they're forever putting their hands on them. And my wife would say, don't touch it, don't touch it. And I said, oh, let, her, let them touch it. It's only a canvas. Who cares? They're not going to damage anything. How you learn? I really talked a lot tonight. Well, you know something? I want to get, I listened to a couple of my tapes, and I want to get more detailed in explaining the concept as well as the action. I mean, I could stand here and paint all day. I've been painting for 60 years all day. And I know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to tell you how to see and how to feel and how to look and how to do the composition. I mean, I make the composition look so simple because I have a photograph. But even with the photograph, it changed the way I painted it from the photograph. Photograph I used as a reference, but the painting is a whole nother world. I mean, that painting has got a ton of weight and a ton of dimension. The photograph's just a photograph. It's what it is. It's not alive. I want the painting to be alive. I want you to feel the weight of the vase. I want you to see the flowers flying all over the place. And when I put the detail on the flowers, when I put all of the bulk on, when I put layer after layer after layer, and then I put a stem in the center and all of this stuff, then this whole entire painting will be done and you'll be able to see what I was talking about to I bring it back and show you again next time. Because it's always next time when it's done that it has the most life, like this fall scene. I mean, I love when the painting's done. I do. Because I love to sit there and look at it and say, wow, God, thank you. 
And I always say a prayer before I start painting something like this. Because I figure he's in charge. I'm just the hands. I'm just the guy standing here with the brush in his hands, acting like he knows what he's doing. This is not going to stay like this, but I'm going to just put a few more strokes of white in here. And I keep doing this over and over and over, and it builds up. And after a while, it'll start to make what it's supposed to make sense, hopefully. That's why I called this show Expression in Painting, because everything we do, we express. Even in our talking, we express. Three minutes. All right, I got three minutes. So we've decided to paint this vase of flowers. I brought in a photograph. Uh, here's the photograph. It's a blue vase on a table with a bunch of beautiful, I think they're poppies, but I'm not sure. They're some kind of orange flower. I don't know the photo. And what I've done is I've done, put this heavy vase just a tiny bit to the, off to the center. And I've given it a lot of life. I've got a white tablecloth or in an in a oak table with a white top. And I've got the background sort of muted because it's windows back there. I'm going to go in and retouch all of that in between the flowers. And the flowers are just flowing all over the place like they're just stuck in the vase. And that's the look I liked. And I have it standing out and, and it's got some life and it's vibrant. I haven't finished the flowers. I've sketched them out. What I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to put layer and layer and layer so that these flowers have all of this soft, wiggly. Some of them have it, but not enough. And when I'm finished with it, I'll bring it back next month and I'll show it to you. But I want you to see how an artist starts a painting, works it up, how he thinks his way through it. It's very difficult for most artists to talk and paint at the same time. You know, I spent 43 years as a hairstylist. I could cut hair and talk all day long. So I think it helped me with the painting in the TV shows. So I want to say have a great Thanksgiving. God bless and good night. Pretty good, doesn't it? It's a Christmas ornament.